So team, welcome, welcome to the day one uh, for our Selenium training and uh, thank you for being here. So we'll get started very quickly. What I want to do is first give you a very brief introduction about what we are trying to achieve through the whole program. Uh, some top 10 questions once answered, mostly the entire thing about the training uh, will give you a good idea. And uh, then we'll proceed with uh, getting our first look at how we start our learning. Okay. Meanwhile, if there are any questions, please do put them over the chat session that is integrated with our go-to training and I will come to them at the end of this pitch. All right, team. So here's a very short presentation. Didn't really want to focus. Uh, let's uh, see uh, where we go with the overall training part of it. So team, the beginning part is the most important in terms of what's the focus. Eventually, what is it that we're trying to master through this program? The core focus team definitely is trying to understand how does the Selenium tool, the automation whole thing works, uh, mastering the IDE to a certain extent. We don't focus too much on IDE except for the first one, two or three sessions. We then quickly move into how to take these code that we generate on uh, IDE level and then move to something called as a remote control or now called a server. Then talk about how do we want to do it using the Selenium 2.0 concepts and web driver. Eventually we will get to the Selenium grid to be able to execute multiple tests in sequence and then in parallel. The whole technology focus to this is the programming languages in and around the Java platform. So we're going to learn Java extensively. You don't need to come with a specific programming background to learn whatever is being presented in these sessions. We will go extensively again on JUnit and TestNG as a Java component, how we work and build our tests using AND tool, Apache POI and many more. I do know team for the beginning level, it is always a challenge because of the amount and the number of tools and the complexity to which it can go. But the whole idea is that we start with the foundation, lay it very strongly and slowly build on every day as we progress. Okay, we will do extensive framework development in the program. This is not some generic framework just to show you how things work. No, we will plan what we want to do. We will design the framework. We will then write every code that we need to be building it. And then we will maintain them. We will see how it works in a real time environment. So most part of these live sessions that go on, will focus completely on frameworks and as we are building frameworks we will learn a lot of concepts around these technologies that I mentioned. So that's the focus team. The focus is very simple to get you geared and take you from where you are today to the 95 percentile plus of the automation or testing population in the world. The reason being the lot of flavors of test automation engineers in the world but honestly people have uh, very little in depth across looking at the whole population in terms of what are these frameworks, how do we develop them, how do we do the coding and so on. That's the most important thing. It is not a tough thing but you need focus. The prerequisites, nothing specifically as long as you have patience to get things started because there are a lot of new things being introduced, you need to follow our instructions what I'm presenting to you, read the documents and the videos very carefully install the tools as I mentioned. If there are questions, there's always the technical group that is there to help. Uh, give me about uh, one or two days to be able to respond back to any technical queries present. If you don't hear back, you can always call me. Okay. Uh, but most importantly, team, you need to practice as we go along. I do understand that time is limited. You have 200 days access to the videos so you can practice a lot. Okay. Now, uh, the is it live sessions that you want to attend or the recordings? There is an entire uh, description out here on the website. If you go to seleniumelearn.com and if you click on the live or videos, I explain them. But most importantly in that, they are the same. The same content is there across everywhere. Each of these live sessions will get recorded and all the participants uh, who have confirmed will be shared those links for these videos. Uh, these are high quality videos. You have 200 days access for all of these videos. Uh, not only this batch, but lots of content from the previous batches. So there's a whole huge collection that will be given access to. 
all these videos team are in a place called screencast.com you will be provided an access to that folder there and you will start watching them all right so the way they're structured at the moment here is there is one folder that will be shared with you it has some basic videos on some of the capabilities of JUnit, uh, installation of Ant, then we go into RC code on JUnit, uh, how to work with Ajax and dynamic applications, uh, the Ajax with web driver code and so on, uh, grid installations and so on, everything out here. But more importantly, you'll see this A18, day one, day two, day three and so on. These are the recordings from the live classes. And when you play each of these recordings team, they will play up in a high definition when you do it using uh, a full screen. So all you have to do is open your video and put it to full screen and you'll see that there's a lot of uh, good clarity videos that you'll find in there. So that's the folder team. You could pick any batch if you're in a hurry. You need a fast track to learn things. Take one batch, go end to end. As you watch these, I'll tell you what else to watch like Excel read write there are specific videos on those and so on most of these videos if you notice are between 40 to uh, 60 minutes each uh, that's the duration of the class and then there are also basic on test ng basics uh, then we have things on grid how to make our grid runs in parallel and so on yes other topics I keep introducing as we go on the database uh, connections using MySQL how do we do it at a Java level is also there all prepared and uh, present in there. All right, team. So that's the overview on the videos and so on. Let me go back to the presentation and quickly uh, wind up those. So while you are still uh, deciding, or most of you have already confirmed, have completed the payment process and everything, you have received or you will receive uh, a welcome pack which will contain uh, the following instructions to get you started. And then uh, if you cannot attend the live for this batch, not a problem. You can always join for the videos to begin with. Start watching them as video versions. Whenever you want, you can upgrade later to a live class, depending on your availability, depending on the next live classes schedule. Because right now it's 4 to 5 specific time. The next batches could be uh, later. It could be from 5 to 6 or 6 to 7 or 7 to 8. So you could pick one of the batches in the next few months, which is more comfortable to you. Uh, yes, there is a combo offer when you want to do both QTP and Selenium together. Uh, there's a, uh, almost a 25% discount on it. You could join and take the offer together at one time, but I would not recommend you to start learning both tools parallel if it's the first time. Take one tool. For example, take Selenium. We will go end to end, spend about four to eight weeks with me on that. Let's complete it and then look for the next possible good batch join then you can join QTP or the other way around, okay? But don't try and learn both the tools together just because there's so much to learn, there's so much to master in them, okay? This is not a training program that's giving you an overview. We will go in-depth, we will go at length and detail on various concepts. You have to know that this is for the best, to, to get the best out of you in the industry right now, okay? Uh, <clears throat> so basically, that's the thing. You could always split your joining dates, but you can take the offer for both together but more importantly when you're watching the videos that's when your questions will come because as you listen uh, to the sessions or when you're uh, in the webinars things may look simple and easy your real questions will come up when you're practicing on the tool and that's when you will be connected with the Google group where all the other training participants are present and your questions will get answered through there so you will have your questions answered Plus, you'll also see what others are facing and how they are able to get through uh, these things. All right. So, yes, team, uh, there is a lot of activity coming up on placement and resumes. I have not yet got a chance or time to spend on it so far. But the reason I didn't really focus is I was very happy with the responses people have been giving in terms of how easy it is making them to get into the market in their interviews and jobs very quickly. So I was glad with that fact, but now I realize that I could structure it better, the whole process. I will be coming up with it very soon. I will let you know as this happens, okay? I'm assuming that it should be towards end of this year, it should be get completed. And uh, team, so basically, as I told you, you don't have to necessarily attend the live classes. You can always take the recorded sessions also. So that's a quick overview team about what I wanted to mention. And uh, let me quickly take uh, some sessions, uh, questions from the chat, and then let's go forward. 
Okay, let's see. Any prerequisites for learning? Shelja answered that. Uh, Prakash, uh, will I be getting the meeting schedule uh, or I use the same? So use the same link for every day of the training that you use to join the session and keep that link handy, keep that email handy. Whenever there is a change in schedule, you will be automatically notified uh, through the integrated meeting invites and uh, you that link will only expire after the second demo class at that time uh, you cannot hit it uh, that's only for people who have not yet confirmed at that point in time will I be covering flash okay so there are lots of things that I'm planning to add uh, I am trying to make sure that whatever content I build is of the best quality that you can learn from I will be adding sessions on flash there are also some on repository management version management using SVN and Maven uh, those will also be coming up very soon. Uh, I don't have a time yet for it. I'm assuming by December 1st week, these should be ready. Yes, so a lot of applications I know are changing uh, into the HTML5 uh, uh, and the Flex side. Yes, so that will be coming up. Uh, Ajax is covered, yes, uh, Prakash, at length, uh, as I've showed you uh, how to work with different types of Ajax applications. Uh, there are complete sets of videos on it. So you could go very systematically on the Ajax things separately by Indu by themselves and you'll get a good idea. So basically we start with how Ajax and with JUnit works, the basics of it. Then we go very deep into Ajax, how you find out element identification for uh, different elements that have uh, dynamic changing attributes and so on. How is Selenium different from QTP? So there are lots of differences. Wilma, what I'll do is uh, post uh, the session towards the weekend I'll put one short document and send it across to everyone so you can use it. Are JUnit and Java different? So basically JUnit and TestNG are use the core Java programming language. They have inbuilt at uh, annotations and they have specific purposes. So they have specific uh, ways specifically designed for a testing purpose be it unit testing which developers use and so on. We could use reuse these annotations and the structure of JUnit and TestNG to quickly create some code. That's the whole purpose. We will be going into them in detail. Just to confirm, is this batch from 14th onwards a live batch or record sessions? It's always, their live sessions will continue to happen. There are 15 live sessions. These same live sessions will also get recorded and hosted. Can I watch recordings anytime I want in 200 days? Yes, absolutely anytime in 200 days. Follow my instructions of what you need to install as Microsoft Silverlight is the only tool you need and then you should be good. Now team, uh, just do note that I'm not too strict about 200 days. If you feel that, hey, I've missed a few sessions, I couldn't go back, can you give me 30 days extension? Not a problem. If you want to repeat it, let's say for another 200 days beyond it, you can use the repeat option which is currently at $75 and get access to one more live class and recordings at that point in time. So Flash will be covered by end of this year or in this batch itself. Not necessarily in the live sessions, but I will be doing recordings on it and I'll present it with all the code and documentation. So for every class I conduct, there is also documentation. For example, this is a document that you could download onto your system and you could read the code from it. Okay, All the class files are also present in this. You could just download the all files of August 18th batch for example, it will give you the entire package of code. Are you giving access to video recordings? Yeah, so video recordings is a mandatory feature from the training because you have to do a lot of practice, there are questions, you can always go back and review it. You will get video recordings with all the options. Uh, do you know any other computer? So let's, uh, those, Tia, yeah, you can probably put the email offline because we're not focusing on other tools apart from Selenium and QTP right now. Should I remind you or the updaters? Uh, you can remind me anytime. All right, team. So that's the overview I quickly wanted to give each of you. Now let's get going with the training part of it and let's start with some very basic fundamental concepts, okay? So before we get into the program, of how we go about, let me give you a structure of how I want to present it, okay? In this 15 live sessions team, I want to be able to cover at least three to five live projects. We will take three to five different applications, different test scenarios and cases from it, which I'll explain to you what each of them are, and be able to automate it by developing different types of frameworks. We will start with a simple data-driven, 
we will then go into a more complex keyword driven and then eventually into a hybrid model okay that's the whole focus as we are building the frameworks we will do lot of our learning on java junit and so on with it all right so now what i've wanted to do team is uh, i came across a good site recently called calculator.net there you go okay so in here i found very simple calculators that can give us a quick walk through the reason i like to start with a simple application at the beginning is it will help me to focus more on selenium and the automation world rather than on the application itself okay so what i will do for the initial one two days is take one simple example we will develop the code in ide we will then take the code and move it on rc and we will see how we can run this code using a java platform okay so to do that the example that i want to take is there's a uh, there are lots of it i want to take two or three examples let's start with something as simple as a gas mileage calculator all right what this does let me give you a very quick walk through let's say that my current odometer reading is at uh, 23000 miles and my previous odometer reading was 20000 miles so basically i've driven about 3000 miles and let's say that i've put in about 150 gallons uh of fuel in it and my gas price at that time when i filled in was 4.19 what this application should do is when a user comes in enters the data and clicks on calculate it should result and give us what is the overall mileage that is achieved okay 20 miles per gallon do you see this this is what we are getting as a result from this application that's a simple functionality but the issue is team for a company like calculator.net when they're working on it there are lots of things to display for example mileage travel since last time there is uh, expense and so on there's so much calculation built a developer is sitting at the back end or they're using some reusable components and developing the whole functionality how the process should work when they deploy it they may see that users are facing a challenge there are errors coming up unexpected so now comes the world of our selenium automation tool so what is the whole focus of this automation that we want to achieve automation is all about team automation testing rather is all about trying to move things from a manual user or a manual developer or even a test engineer to a script or a tool that will automatically execute and be able to test that that's the process of automation okay as we go along there are three fundamental philosophies that we have to follow the first is it has to be efficient in the sense that if a manual user or a manual test engineer to test that application like calculator.net takes about let's say 2 hours to complete testing using uh, 25 or 30 different sets of data our automation script at the end of it we should be able to do it in a much much shorter time that's your efficiency okay next comes your reusability reusability team is the focus of i will spend more than 4 5 hours developing this automation script so if i just use it one time i have not really focused on the efficiency so i should be able to reuse it every time that i want to go back and test with minimal changes as the application changes that's your reusability these two are very important but without proper accurate results there is no point in doing that what do i mean if the manual test engineer is sitting sitting and doing about 20 sets of data and he or she is able to perform the right tests and achieve about let's say only 19 sets of data he or she is doing it correctly and but one set of data has been mistyped they've got some error erroneous things they go back and redo it correct if my script is not improving that accuracy and it is not doing exactly what is needed to be done again it's a failure unless these three core fundamental philosophies are met we will not be able to automate in our journey to learn automation our focus is going to be predominantly about automating 
testing is just a few more steps beyond it. So we will focus a lot on automation. That's where our scripting, programming, frameworks, all of this will come. And then testing is just reporting what we find. Okay. So team, now what is it that I wish to achieve? How do I want to do it? So let's start afresh with this calculator. These are the steps that we perform. What I will do is I'm going to create in C drive under Selenium a new folder and I'll call this as N10. This is for the November 10th batch. And team, I know there are questions coming up in the chat. As we go along, I will give a pause in between and take up your questions. Let me copy a quick Excel sheet and put that in our batch and start to work on it. I'm going to call this as calc underscore net. So in here, team, I will start first with designing a plan for it. What is the plan? A plan is my high level overview of what is it that I want to do. What is our intent with the whole thing? I have an application and I want to test the basic mileage calculator functionality. Okay, to see if this works correctly or not. Browser, I'm really not so bothered. If it was QTP, what this was designed for, this whole sheet, that's fine. But this is, we're working on Selenium. So if we are working on Selenium, I could do a cross-browser testing. I could do it on any browser using the same script with very simple changes to it. And that's the number one top advantage that Selenium has over QTP. I don't think cost is a big difference team. Just because the license cost is low, people start to work with Selenium. But they, QTP and Selenium, the overall operation cost that goes on in a year's time do match each other. So there are other benefits to the tool which have been underplayed. So that's what we'll focus. Now team, before I go into all these steps where we're trying to automate, the whole intent is the reason I love to go from an Excel into deploying the code is it gives us a structure of what we want to do. If we are a manual test engineers also, we got to perform the same things. And here are the different steps that we would do. I would write down the steps and then try and see how we automate it. So we opened the browser, we went to the application URL, we entered the values, we'll process the mileage calculator in this case. Then we have to capture the results, be able to compare the results and see if they're correct or not and then close the browser, correct? These are the steps we need to perform if we are the, if we are a, a manual test engineer. Now, these steps, as we understand, become very easy for anyone who's looking at it, right? All I have to tell you is where is the browser? Okay, here is the URL. What are the values? For this, I need to provide some test data. So we can take a sample collection of test data and start filling in with it. So out here, I have different sets of test data. I don't need these. So what I will do is I'll create a fresh set of test data. Very quick, simple test data. I need uh, current mileage, starting mileage. Uh, then what else did I have? Gallons. Then I had uh, the cost per gallon, right? And then finally, the result. Right, So this is the set of test data I can take. Now it's very easy for me as manual test engineers to store everything out here as information and then read these values and replicate them on the application. Okay, So let's just put a different sets of values to be able to test. But why do we need different sets of values? The reason is very, very important team. This application, let's say, is working for a given set of data. But when I keep changing the data, for some specific sets of data, it could be breaking, where the scenarios are different. Because, all because of the wide variety of users who may be using it. Someone's got 300,000 miles on their vehicles. What would they get if they put that? To be able to test different range is what is important. Let's say, uh, someone is very new. We start with 100 and 0 and they've put about uh, 10 gallons. What is the cost? We will have one cost out here. And we will try and take the similar one and then change sets of data within it. Let's say there's another user who's got 100,000 miles and the starting was 90,000 miles and it's put about 100 miles, 120 gallons. Let's say it was 3.5. So for now, just two sets of data. As manual engineers, what I need to do, 
take this set of data, put it out here, set whatever information I've given there and be able to do the calculation, get the mileage from here, 10 miles per gallon and put it out here. That, that's what we wanted. What did I copy? I just copied one thing and I got so many things. See, see, I have to. Mm -hmm. It's still coming up the whole thing. That's fine. 10 miles per gallon is what we got. Then we take the other set of data and try and do the same exact thing. Let's see what we get with it. 120 and 3.5. Have I started on the selenium part of it? Not yet, team, but we were getting there. So with this data, it's 83.3 miles per gallon. That's like a supercar, which is very efficient. Now, the, the purpose is that are these results correct or not? Okay, this is the mileage, let's say, and then I'll put a new column called result. Output from the application, let me put it on a different color. The result, let me put it on a different color. Why am I doing all this aesthetics? Very easy for us to refer and be able to identify what exactly we are doing. And let's say that we, the user has found that, hey, this is correct, this is correct, but the results uh, are this state correct. Another set of data is added and there's a problem. This is how the manual testing is being performed. And whenever they see that the results are incorrect, they're taking that set of data and saying, hey, for this set of data, it's a problem. Developers, can you go look at it and see what's causing this? Then they have to reproduce the error, see why it's occurring, find the root cause, go back, fix it, test it out, and then put that new code back on the application. That's the whole process at a high level team. Okay. Now, when I want to automate, there are further questions that need to get answered. Team, if you know two things for automation, your life becomes very easy. There are basically two things. We as users have two ways to interact with anything that is happening on a uh, software application which is there on your system, be it a desktop application, be it on the browser and so on. We have a keyboard and a mouse, correct? So we can click on buttons, we can enter text and so on. We have the first part called where do I want to do something, right? Where? Is it a button? Is it an edit field? Is it a text? Is it an image? And so on. And then there is the other question called as, okay, fair enough, we found the address of that. What do we want to do? Do you want to click on it? Do you want to enter the text? Do you want to select something from a drop-down list and so on? That, these two are the most important aspects for your automation success. Once we master this, we are set very strongly in that direction. And Selenium IDE does that exact thing in a very, very efficient manner. So now let's take a look at Selenium IDE team. It's a very simple thing. You just have to configure IDE onto your Firefox browser. Your IDE is built with Firefox. It is not built for other browsers. But once we get our script and move it into a Java or other programming languages, whatever you want to use, you can be able to uh, go back and execute the same tests on different browsers. But your IDE comes with your Firefox. So to install it, all you have to do is go to Google and click on um, Selenium IDE and you can go to the seleniumhq.org projects ID and then you could download Selenium. It gets downloaded and it will get configured onto your tools option. All right. So now let's go and click on this, assuming that you have it set up and ready. Now, once I click on it, here is how a view will be of Selenium ID. Different things present, but it's a very, very simple and neat UI, user interface, what you see and feel on this. Okay. Most important thing, team, is this window out here, where it has command, target, and value. Okay. Then there are features of what we want to do out here. And as we execute these codes, as they get generated, you will see the results coming up out here. Okay, these are the three fundamental things. We don't emphasize too much on IDE. We will move away from this in the next two, three sessions, but it's a good starting point for everyone. Now, what is it that I want to do? You have to make sure that this is pressed in. So if I go over here, you will see that it is already recording. Okay, now I will 
keep my ID to one part of the screen, my application to the other part and try and perform just like my manual user does. Now let's go here and fill in, let's say, the 100 uh, information out here. What you need to see is what is happening on this part of the window as this happens. There are two lines generated. The first is called open something, the next is type something. Now let's see what happens. I'm going to say, uh, let's say 15,000 and uh, let's say we are saying about, we put about 50 gallons and the price is 3.5 and I click on calculate. At this point, I got my result. In fact, if I put 100, 15,000, I got a negative miles per gallon. The reason being, I am starting, my current odometer reading has gone back. So this is another good way of looking at it. Hey, uh, you could also have a functionality where the user is prompted saying, are you sure the data you entered is correct or not? Right? But for our, our practical purpose and exercise, it is important to see what this code does. Okay? What Selenium has done is when we clicked on this red button out here, it went into a recording mode and it is telling us, hey, user, I am ready now to learn whatever you do on that application. The first thing it did is it, it put a base URL. The second thing it did is it started generating a set of lines as we continue to perform them. Now it has answered two most fundamental important questions of automation. What are they, team? What is it that I want to do? And where do I want to do that? The command is telling Selenium as to what should we do on the application. The target is telling Selenium as to how or where is this where is this element present. Sorry, it's not a how, it's a where is this element present. And then there is another thing called as value. Value is basically mentioning that fair enough, I found what to do, I found where is it but do you want me to enter a specific information into it? And that's the one in value. What you see as 100 is out here. Your 15,000 is out here. Your 50 gallons is out here. Your three and a half dollars per gallon is out here. Those are the values. Here is some way that Selenium is identifying each of these elements. All of these things are called as element. And here is where it is knowing what is it that the user performed. Once we have done this, all I have to do is go to file and save test case as what you did right now is just to develop a simple test case. I'm going to call this as CNET1. I have now saved my test case and you'll see that name changing out here. Now as a user, what we have done is we've completed the record. So I could stop the record just by releasing the record button out here. If I go and click on this button, what Selenium will do is it will execute all of these steps from the beginning till the end. Okay? And you see that it has generated at the end of it a green bar out here which tells me that hey, I could execute whatever you have given correctly. But since it was a little fast, I, I want to see exactly what it is doing. I'll move the bar to a little towards slower side and uh, click on this play current test case button again. Now it will do the exact thing. See open is taking me to that URL. Type is identifying where and what to type and performing that. Let's slow it down further and now do one more run. So as you do this runs, what you have done successfully is you have instructed the IDE to learn what to do and perform that action. Now let's take a little closer look at each of these. How do you know what each of these commands do? There is only one way that I strongly believe and the way I approach any kind of a session team. You have to learn things practically along with the guide for it. Okay? I don't believe that you get a definition and then go and try it. Keep trying and get the definition also for it. Let's focus on the command part. Open is a command which takes me to a specific URL. Okay? If I specify the URL out here, it will take me there. But hey, this is not the complete URL. This is just seems to be the remaining half of it. But where is that beginning of it where I have www or something? That's your base URL. My open command is telling from the base URL, where should I go? 
the type command is telling me, hey, let's type something. What do I want to type? The value is 100. Where do I want to type? It is identified by this. But how do I know that this is definitely identifying this specific element? If I select that line and you go and click on find, you should be able to see a green highlight or whatever color highlight coming up on that element. Do it for element by element and see how it works out. See, you're able to do it for each and every element. How is this getting recognized? There are very few simple concepts team. The most importantly, there is something called as elements and there are identifiers, which will come to in the next session, okay? You can identify elements by various ways. The first way is your ID or name attribute, then your XPath, and then you have your CSS way of identification, okay? We most predominantly use XPath irrespective of whatever be the application is the most successful way of using it. We will go at length on XPath identification, but I wanted to give you a quick flavor of one test run. Hey, now let's do one more test run. How about doing something like, uh, is it recording? No, it's not. So math calculators, uh, time calculator. Uh, then I saw something called as a date calculator. Mm, age calculator. Oh, okay, cool. So date of birth, age at the date of, okay. So cool. Here is another calculator called age calculator. Let's just take a different example. Now I want to see how can Selenium identify the same thing. So team, what's my process? My process, I'll start with saying, now I want a new test case. I don't want to disturb the earlier one that we created. We've created a new one. Out here, I'm going to go and click on the record. At this point, what I will do is I will go out here and let's say that I select some arbitrary data. I'm going to start with, let's say, Jan. I'll put a date on it and let's say we put a year like 1979, okay? And now I will leave these dates as is. But let's say that we want to calculate as of November 1st. And then I click on the calculate button after which we get the results of, of as to the exact age of an individual. So is this application working correctly? Can we automate it? And that's exactly what we're trying to do. Have we come to a part where we're trying to see the result, verify it and so on? Not yet, but we're gonna come to that part also. So now let's say at the end of it, hey, everything is good, but, and if I probably now go put it to slow and say recording, stop it, enough of your recording. I want to execute this test case. Will it do everything? Will it select the date as per the instructions that I've given? There you go. It is doing it a little more slowly just because of the speed I set it to and I get the results. And it's a run, correct? This is good, but how about if I want to capture, why did it not do it? Hey, see, it's not done something specifically correct. Is this correct? It's given us 10 months. It has not taken 2011. Why didn't it do that? Let's take a quick look. The first thing I would do team, if the, any step is not working, why, but why is it still green? The reason team is Selenium didn't have an issue in performing whatever we said it should do. When we gave the instruction, it worked, but we don't see that result here. But from Selenium's perspective, it worked. We will try and identify the first thing, do a find on it. Do I see that element? Yes, we see that. Now, this is the value we're giving. I can go and change this value and see exactly as to where it is going wrong. Now, let's try and rerun this test to see how it works out and see exactly as to what's happening at that point in time. See, as soon as I enter 2010, was it entering 2010? Yes, but then when I went here and said select something, what is this find out here? This is the date. Why is it doing something different? 2010. Okay, interesting. The other good way team is I right click and I say toggle breakpoint. What this will do is this is a feature with an ID. ID doesn't have too many things, just got few things. But it's a good starting point as I told you for our fundamentals. Now let's do another run. 
when I do a run this time, it will run only till this step and pause for the next actions from us. Now let's see. You see that this is in yellow. So it is trying to execute this here. Since, <coughs> sorry, since um, we haven't seen um, that if we haven't yet executed that step, it is still in yellow. So now I'm going to say resume this test run. See, actually this looks like a defect to me. A user is actually entering 2010 and clicking on calculate, but when we go there next, it was not coming up automatically. When we were doing it to the script, the entry was being done correctly, but there's something happening between these two. Let me try and delete this step and what I can do now is right click and say insert new command. To insert a new command directly out here, I have to answer these three fundamental questions. What is the command? What do I want to do here team? I want to type. Is there a command called type? Yes. If you go back to CNET, all of the commands that we did here was type. What is the difference of the commands here? These are select, where you're selecting a specific element or an item from the drop down list. Okay. Now, on this field, what I want to do is put a command called type. But why can't I write anything out here? The reason, uh, the reason this is not happening is you have to enter your commands below in these three sections. So here, as soon as I start to write, I will see all the commands that start with the word TYP. Now let's say I select type. You will also see a reference exactly as to what this type method or command does. It will type a specific value on a locator. Locator is now basically your target. A, but I have not found the target. How do I identify what this element is? To do that identification, all I have to do is get the attributes of specific properties of this and put it out here. Now team, the next tool that we need to use very actively is called as Firebug. So what I will show you very quickly is a tool called Firebug. Do a Google and get Firebug. Go to the website called getfirebug.com. Click on the download Firebug and install it. It's a free tool again. Again, this is integrated with your Firefox browser. Once you put it in here, you will see that very similarly like your ID, you will see something called as a fire bug out here. Okay. Now, you don't need to do anything out here. You just need to look at the icon for fire bug here. Click on that and it will open up this. So what is this? It is all about how is Selenium identifying each of these elements using the simple values out here. Selenium, when we're doing a recording, is going actually into the page source. It is looking at that HTML code and identifying specific attributes from that and getting that information. Okay, We will expand a lot more on Firebug and element identification in the next session team, but I just wanted to quickly check any questions that we have for now before I continue further. I know there's just about five, six minutes left in the session. Let's see, are the parameters of target field standard? No, these are the ones that changes basically depending on what we have. If if Selenium cannot identify by an ID or a name, it will try an XPath. If it cannot identify by the XPath, then it will go to CSS. We're going to come to that. For example, if I want the XPath for this element that I want to put here, I right click and I do something called as inspect element. You will not see the inspect element until you install Firebug. Once I do the inspect element, I go to the HTML code for that specific element in the HTML file. Now, here is where my HTML code is for this. So, if I right click on this HTML code in Firebug, I can use the option called copy XPath. This gives me the XPath or the identification to put in the target. So, now I could go here and paste that. And I get something which is very similar, just a different representation called as an XPath, which we will master extensively. Team. But before I do something else with it, I want to make sure that it is identifying it. That's when I click on find. That tells me, yes, this is the one. Next, I have to put some value against it. Now, I don't even know, even if I put a value, 
like it failed the last time, will it fail again or not? But let's give it a shot. Does it put the correct values? Let's take a look. It is putting the correct values and when we click on calculate, however, it is going back to 2011. It is resetting this to 2011. Is this only because it is automation? If I do it manually, what will happen? The same thing, team. In fact, I have not experienced this on this application so far. And I click on calculate. Now I get the correct one. See, my automation is failing. And hence, team, this is a great example to show me the difference between a Selenium RC code and a web driver code. When we use WebDriver, it will initiate actions just like a user does. When I'm doing it manually, I'm getting the correct results. When I'm doing it through my script, I'm not getting the correct results. And this is a great example for me to report errors as well. But how to make it work exactly very, very easy when we move to a WebDriver code. All right, team. So we will come to this. See, Supraja, as I mentioned to you in the email also, I will expand on CSS when, the, when we come to it, okay? It's the same exact thing. If I, for example, out here, if you see CSS input type equals image, what it is trying to do is it is taking certain attributes from what you see here and putting it in there. If you right click here and go to inspect element, you will see something called as the the main HTML tag for this is called input. That's what is going out here. Then you will see a type of this HTML tag being an image. See, the type attribute has a value image. That information is taken and put here. If I have to do the same exact thing in a new step using XPath, all I have to do is use two backslashes, say the HTML tag is input, open square brackets, say at write the word type which is the attribute name out here and give equal to and the value for that being image. Now when I say find I should be able to look it should be able to find that out here. It is the same identification different ways to do it. Okay if anything for example I take this element and I click on inspect element then I go here and say instead of copy XPath, I copy CSS path. I can put that information here. Here is a different way of identifying it. This way of identification of CSS is telling me that let's start with the code at the beginning. The first tag, tag out here is called HTML, correct? That's what is put here. The next tag is called as body. That is what is put here. The next table, the next T body, table body within that. It will continue to go in that direction of how we see this code here and it will eventually come till this specific element. And then you can try and find that specific element as it comes up. All right. Two different ways. We're going to master both of them. Uh, CSS is not very widely used, but we will also look at it as promised. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Can we add why does ID not write it as XPath but as CSS here? Okay, it goes through a steps. It will first see, okay, Supraja, I'll keep your question for the next session. The first level is ID, the attribute name I, uh, called ID. The next is called name. If that is not coming up, it will take the XPath. If that is not happening for it, then it is taking the CSS for it. It's the order in which it will try and recognize. How do I know the list of commands or what command I should use in the command column? Right, Vijayata. So there are two ways to do it. Number one is you could go here and look at all the commands that are there. Okay. Take any command and you can read what it does. However, the better way team is to try and do simple recordings. Even if we are not going to the extent of RC at the moment, do simple recordings and play around with different types of objects. For example, I go here, start my record and say I click on this. What is coming up here? See, there is a click. There's click and wait. As you perform, see what is coming up and then read it. That will give you a stronger foundation on the commands. We will keep exploring it as we go beyond on it. Selenium ID works with Firefox. That's correct. What are the parameters of target field standard? That I've answered. Real time, how much time does it take to make an automation plan? Wilma, it is more like a journey. We start with a very 
low level POC, proof of concept. Then we go into that next stage. So it takes a uh, significant time eventually to build a framework, but a uh, couple of weeks you're ready with your initial plan and your uh, design for it. How to best decide should be automated which areas to be done manually? So the is it manual or automation? Only one answer to it. ERA. If we automate it, will it be efficient? Can we reuse it? Will it give us accurate results? If we are able to substantiate those three statements for any manual test case, then it can be automated. Karthik, I have access to videos but unable to download Java code. Yes, Prabhu. So what I can do is if you're not able to download it, uh, I have also sent all the documents to the email to the party uh, to the Selenium members very recently. Send an email. I will resend that email to you. Uh, Vijeta, you can start with QTP and go to Selenium or the other way. Both tools are presented in the same way. Okay, let's see. It is confusing. What is the difference between? When I come to the depth of it, I will explain to you at length the difference between XPath and CSS. All right. While recording, let's see. Can we add a step after type? Click enter on 1975. Yes, exactly. So what do we do to make this happen as a manual user? Can I go here and insert a new command that will do a tab or something out here? There is a certain level at which we can do on an ID, but an extensive level when we come to an RC or our web driver using a Java code. That's going to come up in the next session. Team, any other questions, please? We're not yet done with exercise. I'm going to save these two test cases so that we have it handy for our next session. We will start from where we left and we can continue from there on. All right, team. Thank you then. Bye for now. We'll see you in day two. Day two is most probably going to be on Tuesday, team. I want people to get ready with all the initial level of installations and watch some of these basic fundamental videos that are already present and then come for the date. So I will communicate to you via email on the same thing. All right, everyone. Take care then. Bye for now. Thank you.